Welcome to the 2021 SSI Protocol Updates and Refresher Training. My name is Victoria Russo. I am the primary subject matter expert for SSI on the Protocol and Validation Team at NHSN. Today's training will review the 2021 SSI Protocol Updates as well as include a refresher review of content areas from the SSI Protocol that we often receive questions about. For 2021 SSI protocol, very few updates were made. The following few slides will address the most significant of these updates. On page 93, a sentence was added to the surveillance methods section to reinforce in writing to users that when reviewing a patient chart for signs and symptoms of SSI, acceptable documentation includes patient reported signs or symptoms within the SSI surveillance period documented in the medical record by a healthcare professional. Patient reported signs and symptoms following surgery are important elements of SSI surveillance and therefore considered eligible for use with SSI as long as documented in the medical record by a healthcare professional. On page 94, we clarify the note under the Operative Procedure Codes section to state that, for in plan reporting purposes, an infection associated with the procedure that is not included in one of the NHSN Operative Procedure categories is not considered an NHSN SSI, although the infection may be investigated as an HAI. We felt this clarification was needed as there are only 39 procedure categories available for use with SSI surveillance. And we occasionally receive questions related to non-NHS and operative procedures. As a reminder, you must verify whether the ICD-10 PCS and or CPT codes assigned to a procedure map to one of the 39 procedure categories in order to determine if the procedure may be eligible for SSI surveillance. Certainly, as a facility, you can choose to follow non-NHSN operative procedures off plan or set up a custom event. NHSN can only provide SSI consultation for the 39 procedure categories included in the SSI protocol. On page 925, denominator reporting instruction number nine, title and instruction, were updated to capture when a patient has more than one operative procedure within 24 hours via the same incision or into the same surgical space. This update is to account for surgery that re-enters the same surgical space via a separate incision site within 24 hours. As a reminder, when a patient has more than one operative procedure via the same incision or into the same surgical space, and the second procedure start time is within 24 hours of the first procedure finish time, report only one denominator for procedure form for the original procedure, combining procedure details according to denominator instruction number nine. Now we are going to move on and review areas within the SSI protocol that seem to generate some of the most questions from users. As a reminder, the NHSN definitions for IWP, POA, HAI, and RIT that are used in other protocols do not apply to the SSI protocol. Also keep in mind that there is no such thing as ongoing or chronic infection in SSI surveillance. In SSI surveillance, a visit to the OR for an NHSN operative procedure begins a 30-day or 90-day SSI surveillance period. A return trip to the OR via the same surgical site ends the surveillance period for the prior NHSN operative procedure and begins a new SSI surveillance period if an NHSN operative procedure is performed. Only one SSI event can be cited per procedure and the SSI event must be reported at the deepest tissue level where SSI criteria are met within the surveillance period. A patient with multiple trips to the OR for NHSN operative procedures has multiple opportunities for SSI citation. Yes, 
a patient may have multiple SSIs. We receive several questions about PATOS weekly. As a reminder, PATOS is a required field found on the SSI event form. You only review to determine PATOS if an SSI is identified within the surveillance period following an NHS inoperative procedure. PATOS determinations come directly from the narrative portion of the intraoperative report. The narrative of the intraoperative report should be the pieces of information dictated by the surgeon which reflect what is seen and what is done during the procedure. A diagnosis, an indication for surgery, and or other headings that are routinely included in the operative report, these are not allowed for use with PATOS. The evidence of infection, such as an abscess or purulence, documented in the narrative of the intraoperative report must be at the same tissue level of subsequent SSI in order to state PATOS equals yes. Since PATOS determinations are limited to the narrative of the intraoperative report, imaging findings, laboratory findings, such as wound cultures, wound class, and other information outside of the narrative are not eligible for PATOS. Please note that PATOS events are still SSI events and must be reported to NHSN. For more information related to PATOS, please review SSI event reporting instruction number three, and also the PATOS quick learn that can be found under the training portion of the SSI landing page. Several of the chapter 17 site-specific surveillance definitions that are eligible for organ space SSI allow for the exclusion of a sign or symptom due to another recognized cause. We frequently receive questions related to whether a patient, a specific sign or symptom may have another recognized cause outside of infection. To clarify to our users, in order to state there is another recognized cause for a sign or symptom, there must be physician documentation that specifically states there is another recognized cause for the sign or symptom, that the sign or symptom is due to something other than infection. The local facility must make this determination based on the documentation available in the medical record. Now, what is meant by gross anatomical exam that is used in many of the NHSN definitions, including definitions used for SSI? Gross anatomical exam means that there is evidence of infection elicited or visualized on physical examination or observed during an invasive procedure. It is what is seen and documented. For instance, an intra-abdominal abscess visualized during an invasive procedure, such as during surgery, or visualization of pus or purulent drainage from the surgical site, including visualized from a drain that terminates within the surgical, spa within the surgical space. As a reminder, imaging test findings cannot be applied as gross anatomic evidence of infection. Imaging test evidence has distinct findings in the NHSN definitions. For example, IAB3B includes an imaging element. We receive a lot of questions related to gross anatomic evidence of infection post CSEC and hysterectomy procedures. To be very clear, only post CSEC or hysterectomy procedures can abdominal pain or tenderness be used as gross anatomical evidence of infection to meet general organ space SSI criterion C when OREP or EMET is also met. We allow abdominal pain or tenderness in post CSEC or post hysterectomy patients to meet general organ space C because these patients may not return to the OR for visualization of infection, and there may not be another way to satisfy general organ space SSI criteria in a patient that also meets OREP3B or EMET2. So allowing the documentation of abdominal pain or tenderness 
as gross anatomic evidence of infection to meet general organ space SSI criterion C enables the user to report an SSI OREP or SSI EMET. Now, NHS and operative procedure codes play an important role in SSI surveillance. The broad use of procedure codes in healthcare provides NHSM with a tool to standardize reporting of SSIs within each category. As a reminder, procedure codes are required for identifying the correct NHS and operative procedure category, but not required to be entered into the application at this time. In the future, NHSN may move towards requiring procedure code entry within the application. Possible benefits to a facility when procedure codes are entered into the application include to identify the specific procedures or specific procedure codes associated with increased SSI risk, to assist with tailoring prevention strategies to specific procedures, and to allow precise feedback to surgeons based on specific procedures. For this next slide, I wanna take the opportunity to remind NHSN users that maintaining the accuracy of the data that is reported to NHSN is imperative. Many of the data elements collected on the forms you submit to NHSN are used in the risk adjustment of the SIR denominator and impacts your SIR. NHSN conducts regular assessments of the completeness, accuracy, and timely submission of the data received in NHSN. NHSN conducts data quality outreach to facilities based on results from regular data quality assessments. Facilities are encouraged to correct their data for the details provided in the data quality outreach email. NHSN on average receives over a thousand inquiries to the NHSN mailbox each week. We work hard to assist users with these inquiries. Sometimes we receive inquiries that may be missing several pieces of key information and or do not include any workup from the user. We kindly request that when sending an SSI inquiry to the mailbox, to please provide your thoughts regarding the case you are requesting for review. This includes to clearly outline your questions. And also include the elements of the criteria for which you are having difficulty making a determination. In addition to less back and forth and quicker resolution of the case, our hope is that the case review process will be educational for you for making future determinations. Please refer to SSI FAQ question one that outlines the elements needed when submitting a request to NHSN for an SSI case review. Don't forget there are plenty of educational resources available to assist NHSN users in SSI surveillance. In addition to Chapter 9 and Chapter 17, there are FAQs, Quick Learns, Annual Training Presentations, Self-Pace Online Trainings, and Table of Instruction Documents to assist with filling out the Denominator for Procedure and SSI event forms. Remember to take advantage of these helpful resources available. Thank you for viewing this 2021 NHSN training presentation. If you are viewing this training video during March 2021, please submit questions to be answered during the live Q&A session by selecting the title of the presentation and submitting your question using the form located on the 2021 NHSN training webpage. Alternatively, if you are viewing this training video after March 2021, please submit any questions about the content of this presentation to nhsn at cdc.gov. Thank you.